All right, for everyone at home, let's go ahead and quickly in a few minutes describe each of our characters. I'll go first so you guys have a little context of what I'm kind of looking for as we describe um, who we shall be in this Lego-themed D&D adventure. Um, so my character's name is Boris the Bugbear. He is a former mercenary, um, but his backstory we won't go into the full thing here, but uh, long story short, he is from a faraway land with much harsher climate, so he's a desert variant of a bugbear. Doesn't really look like any bugbear you might encounter in, on this continent. He has deep black fur covering his whole body, has a bit of a indigo iridescent sheen to it and certain light, so it's kind of a cool look. He has very bright yellow eyes like most bugbears. They're set wide on the top of his head. He has huge fangs and claws. He's absurdly ripped because he's a 20 strength character. He's, he's just starting out as, as strong as you can be. Um, he's uh, considerably like old age for a bugbear of his description. He's like, you know, in his late 20s, which seems normal for most humanoids, but he's, he, that's like a, a bugs, bugbear life is a little quicker than most species. So um, he has fought as a mercenary for many, many years, but he's now breaking off on his own, trying to form his own company to get the maximum amount of profit to, to raise their station. He wasn't able to get any more promotions because uh, bugbears aren't necessarily the most um, appealing creatures to look at. He's a bit of a, uh, like a monster to most humans, which is the, the bit of a black sheep. A bit of a black sheep. The continent is dominated by humans, so he's trying to do his own thing, be an entrepreneur in a way, and break away from the, the military life. So um, He knows each character here from previous encounters. So Tyus, he's fought with Tyus in a number of different battles, not necessarily in the same company, but he knows him by sight. You can't miss him, he's huge. Um, and he wanted to get Tyus on this mission, on, on any mission he would get because he's massive and strong and he knows, he's seen him fight. Um, never on the opposite side, always on the same side, which is nice. Um, he knows Steven from when Steven managed to steal some stuff that they were hired to guard. So Stephen caused him and his other men to fail their guard mission, but he knew how good a job he did and wanted to make sure he had a stealthy guy on his side. So that's how he got Stephen on board. That's how the crew was assembled there. Um, uh, Garrett's character, Blipnar, he met him while on a recon mission in the woods. He accidentally stepped on part of his mushroom house and uh, quickly paid him off with a few gold coins, but he realized uh, Blipnar's magical potential and uh, not knowing any other magic characters on the battlefield um, he knew where to go for some help there so that's how uh, Boris his his main you know description his story and uh, how he's met all of you but let's start with you guys let's start with brother Steven's character Svensson uh, you were using a bit of my uh, my uh, one of my alternate uh, names there, <laughs> one of my egos, alter egos. Uh, the name is Svensson, Brother Svensson. Anyway, I won't do it all in character. Um, <laughs> Brother Svensson is a disgraced priest from the Northern Kingdom, Northernish Kingdom. Um, he's about thirty years old, just a normal human. Or sorry, thirty-five years old. He's about just a normal human of modest strength. He had a harsh upbringing. He didn't have a lot of combat training or, you know, extensive um, exercise in the field of warfare, whatever. Uh, he had humble beginnings, uh, became a priest, um, eventually became a priest, but had uh, a bit of a tragedy along the way, and he is now disgraced from the monastery. Um, he has gone to his ways of thieving. He is an expert thief. He enjoys it deeply. Um, however, he has lived a life of solitude and he always enjoys making friends. He tries to socialize whenever he can and communicate whenever he can. He does appreciate that. However, thievery does get in the way of friendships sometimes. Um, his basic um, appearance, he's just a standard human, uh, wears a brown cloaked elements um, that he used to have at the monastery. Uh, master thief with the basic rogue weapons. He's a rogue, class rogue. Um, and uh, yeah, he knows... Um, Boris and Tyus from swiping some various goods from under their nose. Stolen goods, I should imagine. Stolen goods. He got them back from them. You know, they didn't steal them. They were guarding stolen goods. Oh, very, very interesting. Anyway, um, but he's happy to be on this mission because he is deeply loyal to King Leo um, for various reasons, uh, which will remain in his backstory later to be revealed. Uh, he's very loyal to King Leo um, and definitely wants to get to the bottom of the mission. Fantastic. All right. Uh, Tyus, you want to discuss... Harrison, you describe your character Tyus for us. Sure. 
So Tyus is a Goliath from the. He's basically been in every mountain range there is. He loves the mountains. That's where he lives. It's hard to pinpoint where to actually say he lives. Um, he is a um, behemoth. I mean, he is just an absolutely huge guy. He's eight foot tall, 350 pounds, big guy. Um, he was found when a orc war band that he was adopted into was destroyed when he was a young Goliath and a uh, battle priest from the army that had destroyed them took him in and he became a paladin as a Goliath so really cool character and that's where he had met or at least seen Boris the bugbear and that's how he learned to fight and to lead and uh, so Stealth may not be his biggest strength, but his biggest strength is his strength. So we're going to see what happens there. Does Tyus have any enemies? Um, he's not too fond of elves. <laughs> and uh, anyone who he sees as a betray, anyone who would like betray him or his kin. Mm-hmm. So he, he's looking out for those uh, dishonorable types. Maybe he'll bump into Steven and have cross swords with him later. Um, but uh, 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 Garrett, let's hear about your character, Blipnar. What's he look like and what's some of his uh, attributes? So I'm Garrett. I am, uh, my character is Blipnar, uh, Fiddlefest, the garden gnome. He is um, the smallest type of gnome there is. There are, you know, forest gnomes. There are uh, stone, like rock gnomes. A little bulkier. Garden gnomes are um, very rarely uh, do they even reach a foot tall. So he is this little, little magical creature who has spent... Well, nobody really knows how long he spent out in the woods by himself. Blipnar doesn't even really remember where he came from. Just that he had to wander into the woods one day to seek solitude and to be around his animal companions. Blipnar has a very, very vast fondness for animal life and nature. He is one of the best animal handlers um, in many, many known kingdoms. Um, he is probably around uh, eight inches tall on a good day. <laughs> uh, but he uh, has a nice little gnome hat, as they all do, a nice big white beard, as he should. And he has uh, fa fashioned himself a um, purple leaf tunic. It was a, um, a leaf he found and uh, managed to dye it. Amazing. But um, he is the uh, druid of our group. Um, has spent a lot of time perfecting, you know, plant magic, animal handling, and um, healing potentials. Now, Blipnar can heal most wounds. Now, it's just his methods may not always be to the, uh, the user's liking. <laughs> Fantastic. Looking forward to oh. seeing more Blipnar. Are you guys doing? Does Blipnar have any uh, animal companions with him at the moment? Blipnar does. Blipnar has uh, talked with many animals, helped many animals on different uh, quests and, and missions in the woods. But one stuck out to him and has stuck around for years with him, and that is his trusty frog companion, Mountain Chicken. <laughs> Mountain Chicken is just a normal frog. There's not a whole lot special about him, but he's Blipnar's, and that's what matters. Incredible. Amen. Fantastic. All right. Well, this uh, this merry band of four misfits, uh, they call themselves the Maverick Nonconformists. That's our name. And uh, so the, the journey begins from here. I think we started a tavern. So yeah, it really rolls off the tongue. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That, it rolls it's funny up the tongue, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, right. So to start off, um, you guys are located on a small little uh, coastal village. When you get a summons from a courier from the Black Falcon, Black Falcon Knight, um, he asks you, uh, specifically you, uh, Boris, to bring your company to his castle as soon as possible. Uh, before you can react, the courier departs. What would you like to do? Hmm. Well, I need to go seek out my allies. 
Yes. Uh, let's see. Um, where am I? Where am I located? I'm, oh, so you're you're in a tavern in this coastal town, just kind of a nondescript tavern. It's just a small little local bar. Um, most of your company is located either in the tavern or just outside of it. Okay. Well, I'll go over to. Let's start with uh, Brother Svensson. I'll walk over to him. You guys, are just, you? you guys are just odd, awkwardly staring at each other right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 no. I'll talk to Brother Svensson. This is the first time we've done this, all right? Um, yeah, I'll walk up and talk to Brother Svensson. Um, Svensson, you uh, had a few ales, or are you still awake to hear the news? <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to get that last one down. I'm sorry, um, yeah, Boris. What, what were you saying? It's pretty early for that kind of stuff, isn't it? I had a bit of a late night. I was, uh, I was up all evening on a stick. Uh, uh, nothing. Never mind. Uh, uh, anyway. what, what, what could I do for you, my friend? What, 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 what do you need? Well, we've got a summons. Looks like we finally have a gig. Um, I'll grab the others. As long as you got all your stuff, we'll be good to go. I'll just finish this up right out. Yes, of course. <clears throat> Sounds good, Spencer. All right. And having... Notified Svensson, I now look for Tyus, which shouldn't be hard at all. Where would Tyus be located? Probably outside, since the tavern <laughs> ceiling is about six to seven feet, and he's eight foot tall. <laughs> yeah, they just bring it out to him. Yeah, So I, I step out the, the heavy wooden door, and uh, I'm guessing he's probably seated on a boulder nearby, uh, just with like an entire barrel of ale in his hands. Uh, so I walk up to Tyus and say, hey, Tyus, how you doing? How is the day faring for you so far? Well, it's been... <coughs> oh, God. My throat <laughs> did not like that. <clears throat> I don't know if my voice can go deep enough. Well, we've been doing pretty good. What you need, brother? Looks like we finally have a job for our skills, my friend. So uh, gather your weapons, gather your strength. We'll be leaving shortly, I imagine. I. All right. Having uh, notified Tyus in his most simple of terms, I look around for uh, an enthusiastic gnome. Where do we think uh, um, Blipnar will be located here? I would imagine he's probably like in the bushes somewhere. <laughs> he's just like in a little shrubbery nearby. Yeah, just watching people. <laughs> in one of the shrubs outside the tavern, perhaps. Yeah. So uh, I walk over to the little bramble where uh, Blipnar is peering out at uh, all the passersby. And I say, Blipnar, Blipnar, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's, uh, he, he at least acknowledges I'm here. So I, I say, uh, Blipnar, we, we have to go soon. Get all your stuff together. We're going to be going, all right? Sound good, Blipnar? Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Blipnar. I'll be back out in a second. Yeah. All right, so I go back into the tavern to get my things and get Svensson. So, me and Svensson walk out. Tyus and oh, Blipnar oh, oh. are there outside, not too far as well, so we are now ready to depart. Um, do we need anything before we go? Do we have enough supplies to make it to the Black Falcon's keep? Yeah, you should have your, your standard load of rations and water. You you could be good for seven days. You assess it'll take you about two days to make it to the fortress mm -hmm. at a normal pace. Fantastic. Uh, looks like we have plenty of supplies. A barrel of ale with me. <laughs> a barrel to go, of course. <laughs> Actually, a good idea, Tyus. Uh, if only we all had your strength. All right. So. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I'll, I don't have much information. All I know is we should be heading towards the Black Falcon's Keep, so we will be uh, departing the tavern. And we've all got what we need. We're all ready to go. A little bit tipsy, maybe, from a few too many ales, but that's okay. We'll walk it off. We start making our way out. Every uh, adventure so starts with an ale or two. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the choice is yours. Do you want to follow the road or try to make it through the woods? Hmm. I, I turn to Blipnar and say, do you think the woods would be a good path to take at this time? Do you think the weather's good? Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> you should know these things, right, Blipnar? <laughs> Imagine he's just like sniffing. Yes, the yes Blipnar knows very well the woods. <laughs> Blipnar thinks we should follow the road for now. 
<laughs> good, to, good to know, Vladnar. Let's take the I, I, road. I would concur. Oh. oh, I beg your pardon. I, I would concur as well. I know the Black Falcons Fortress, uh, they, um, they keep their roads well secure, the Falcons do. Uh, very few thieves dare show their faces in this land. Yes, uh, the only thieves to be found would probably be in the woods. So let's stick to the road. It'll probably take us a little longer, but it'll be direct. Too close to town for animal friends. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Should let's probably keep my hood up around here. Let's uh, go ahead and take the road. Then we'll march along. So, okay, so you guys start off on your epic journey. As you can see, you're moving the Maverick Nonconformists, and everybody, go ahead and. Uh, Roll perception for me as you near this border post. Oh, man. So, so Brother Svensson, you know that you're on a road. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's as far as your, as as far as your skill can tell you. Um, Boris the Bugbear, um, you, you know the same thing. You know that you're on a road. Whereas Garrett and Tyus notice a border control point with a, a bunch of agents standing outside of it oh oh my so as you guys come up um you get to tell me how do you wish to approach since you know from a while out that this border patrol station exists do you want to approach stealthily or just march right down the road so this is black falcon patrols right or uh, lion knights lion knights looks like Hold on, I'm, I'm Take, mom says I'm <laughs> Take your time. So based on the livery, they're Lion Knights. We shouldn't have any reason to fear them. However, given this, the weird appearance of our group, um, uh, Boris suggests that uh, Steven Svensson's character take the lead as the Huey. Uh, okay. Advisable. advisable so, so. And we just stroll on in casually as possible, as weird as we look. Um, we all follow Svensson, even though technically I'm the one who got the letter where I know that humans prefer to see humans. So Perhaps you shall, uh, perhaps I should be dubbed the, uh, the ambassador of the group, sir. Yes, absolutely. So. Ah, official um, a liaison to all those who may, may be fall upon. <laughs> yeah, don't overthink it. All right, <laughs> move on. Okay, <laughs> on. Oh, go on. Okay, so so now you guys should see your tokens. You have full control, so go ahead and move where you'd like to move. So as you approach, um, one of the guards kind of approaches you and says, uh, Oi, what's your business here? Right. Do I roll charisma or anything, or do I just go? I just tell no, them what just, we're doing. We got a letter. We're here. heading towards the Black Falcons. So. Yeah, you just, uh, yes, yes. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Lovely afternoon. Uh, my name is Bella Svensson. We have in our possession a letter summoning us to the Black Falcon's Fortress. Uh, we would like to pass, if, you, if that is at all possible, sirs. Oh, of course, you can pass. Uh, but you're going to have to pay the toll. Oh. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what, uh, what toll would that be, sir? It's, uh, it's 100 gold per person. Oh, you uh, don't. Allow me to uh, uh, allow me to uh, console with my uh, compadres uh, for a moment, if you do not mind. Mm -hmm. So, Let's so just, while uh, find some money. So, while you're doing that, um, everybody, go ahead and roll insight. Insight. Oh, geez, Tyus. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, everybody. No one has to roll anymore. Tyus, Tyus got it. Um, so, Tyus. Uh, and this is just for you. No one else notices this. You notice that these guards look a bit unkempt, and there appear to be bloodstains on their uniforms. Uh oh. All right. Now, are we thinking? Oh wait, is it like kept like uh, they've been out here a while, or like like the? These guys have not shaven or taken a bath in a while. Gotcha. They're living. I think this they... is not. Yeah, this is not what you would expect a royal guard to look like. Mm. Okay. So, Brother Svensson, come join the come join the uh, huddle over here. Gentlemen, I must bid excuse me. I I am being summoned. If you uh, uh, wait here, do not go anywhere. I'll. I'll be about a moment. Right. Mate, I don't I don't know 
deep are really their royal guards. They seem all dirty. Yes, it, it, I think you're right, Tyus. I think these uh, guards mean to do us harm. This is not legal. Uh, they, they Are they imposters? We should probably try to intimidate our way through. Very scary looking. Blipna is frightened. <laughs> Uh, I, I've got a bit of a plan. Shall I go up and inform them that my giant friend is not the most convinced of their fee? Perhaps we should uh, go about that direction? No, 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 no. Oh, no. So how about we have Tyus come through and say, we don't have the gold. What are you going to do about it? I think you're going to step aside. And then Tyus intimidates them because he's big. So. Yeah, I advantage to intimidate. Guys, guys, guys. Let's do that. The let's, let's try that. It, otherwise, we just kill him. <laughs> Oh. So, so here's you guys were about twenty feet away and talking very loudly, so they know that you're onto them now. Uh, they toss off their tabards and reveal loud. themselves to be um, forestmen. Uh oh. Like, so, help? go ahead and everybody roll that initiative. We've been ambushed. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, brother Svensson. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so you click on the token and then. Yeah, wait. I, I'm jumping. I'm ready. I'm jumping at the bed. What do I do? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep, you guys did good. Uh oh, guards are pretty high too. Yeah, yes, click that bad boy. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Not good. Okay, so let me see if everybody's in the turn order. Yep, we've got everybody in the turn order. And now we will swerve. All right, so Brother Svensson, you are up first, and you are now being ambushed by a bunch of forest men who are seeking to extort you. Interesting. Okay, okay. Um, I got one of two things. Are, are they attacking me right now? Or they're just... Oh, yeah. They're going to attack oh, us. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're yeah, coming. They, okay, they're coming. All right, let's see. They have see. nefarious intent. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Um, I think my first move... I. I, I'm dealing with ranged weapons, so I'm going to start firing the short bow. Okay. What is your target? Your target? My target is the tower, I think. Yeah. You're just firing? High ground dead. Yeah, right there. You're, you're firing at this guy? Yeah. Okay. He's on the top, so you're on the ground, so it's going to be at disadvantage. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll take. I'll change that then. Um Actually, could I could I attack the tower by running to it? Can I? Is there an open door or anything? Uh, maybe. I would assume yes. yes. How, Actually, how, you know what? We're, we're firing arrows first. <laughs> okay, we're gonna fire at these two guys in the front row here. Okay, so for since you're level one, you only get one action, so you can fire your bow once at one target. All right, because we'll because remember at this character here. Oh, this guy. This guy. Yeah, that's it. Okay, go ahead, and, back him first. go ahead and fire your arrow. All right, that will hit the guy. Ooh, got him. Bloop. Oh, no, he's taking an arrow to the chest. <laughs> Oof. Perfect, good. Love it. Good got shot. Him. Okay, stop Tyus. streaming, Steven. Oh, yeah, Tyus, you're up next. So, how tall is this tower? Uh, it is about um, the where they are on the roof, about sixty feet. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Oh, Boris up there. Uh, Boris, would you like to be tossed? Let's do it. <laughs> Can I toss Boris up there? Okay, so your your plan is to is to yeet Boris to the top of the tower. This has no side effects. Go horribly wrong. Um, I am all for it. Um, so, in order for you to do this, uh, Boris, are you willing to be yeeted? Yep. Okay. So, Tyus, go ahead and roll a vanilla strength check for me. Okay. Right. Just. Oh. Oh no. Okay. So. You oh, no. as so just to show what happens, you pick up Boris and you go to whip him up on top of the tower, but you get a cramp in your lap. 
as you're whipping him and you're just like, oh, oh. And the cramp is so bad that you whip him into the side of the wall. <laughs> um, basically about two, two to three feet off the ground. He just goes head first into this thing. Um, go ahead and roll a fudge die for me, Boris, to see if you get knocked unconscious. There you go. Okay, so you are conscious, but you take three points of bludgeoning damage from impacting the wall. <laughs> oh. Uh, this is all plan. He's still alive. <laughs> yeah, you you are also prone, so you'll have to you'll have to stand up uh, when you when you comes to your turn. It was it was a noble no, noble attempt, but you may have gone a bit over the top. I like the idea. <laughs> um, a little ambitious. I will I will give you, um, Tyus. I'll give you inspiration. Um, for your next roll. So whenever you want to use inspiration, you just get automatic advantage because I thought it was a hilarious idea, um, <laughs> even though it failed. So <laughs> next time you do a roll and you fail, just say, I want to use my inspiration. You can re-roll whatever that check is. Nice. Gotcha. It was a very good idea, Titus. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Next up is one of the Forestman bandits. Uh-oh. And he, uh, who just got shot by Brother Svensson, is going to fire back at uh, Mr. Svensson. Uh-oh. And he is going to huck his short bow at you. But he misses. Whew. Bad aim, so bad aim. You, <laughs> you, gonna... hear him pull, you hear him pull back, and he's looking at you, and he's like, knave, and then he lets sling an arrow, and it just kind of whiffs right past you, and you get to make a cool retort because you're so awesome and you didn't even move as it flew right by your face. Amateurs. Nice. <laughs> oh, he shoots like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> well said there, little gnome. Well said. <laughs> you guys are going straight for the insults. <laughs> yep. All right, who's up next? Uh, the, the, nec- the other forest men. Uh, mm. Let's see here. Which which one are you? This one in here. So this one in here is going to come outside, Mm-mm. and he is going to fire his short bow at the giant honking Goliath because it's the biggest target out there. Oh yeah. And your AC is ridiculous for your level, so I probably won't hit you. Oh, he does get you. Uh, five points of damage. Oh. That was an exceptional roll. That is really rare. Ooh. So the Goliath now has an arrow sticking out of him. Um, that was not good. And next up is Boris the bugbear, who is uh, at the base of the tower, slightly less for wear. <laughs> All right, so I, I am prone, right? So I need to just get up. Is there anything else I can do after that, or is that a, just a, the action? Uh, you can you can get up. Um, you have um, you'll use half of your movement to stand up, and okay. that's it. How many more squares can I move from the base of the tower here? Um, you can move about, uh, they're each five feet, so three. Okay. Can I go diagonally? This is a lot of questions, but I've never played this before. Yes. Yeah, you can go diagonally. Okay. Well, let me go, um, if I can move anything. Um, I want to move towards this guard that's closest to me right by the tower around the corner. I think I might be able to reach him. Yeah, I think I can reach him. Ooh, your reach. Yes. And I'm just going to take a big old swing with my greatsword. Go for it. Sure. Ooh, sure. You miss, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm still a little dazed. <laughs> you, 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 you. <laughs> Whiff. All right. So next up is the other guard who saw Boris come around and attack his friend. And he is going to take a short bow shot at you. And he misses. Amateurs. All right. Next up is... The other forceman bandit who's in the tower, he will come to the base of the tower and shoot down. And he just doesn't like the gnome for some reason. So he's going <laughs> to see that little guy. He's he's at height. So he's going to get a normal shot because you're a small creature um, at range. So he's just going to get a normal shot, not an advantage. And he misses you. <laughs> These guys are awful shots, by the way. <laughs> no, very small, very small. You cannot hit Flipnar. <laughs> All right, Flipnar, you are up. Yes. Get him, Flipnar. Get him. All righty, all righty. Um, 
Let's see. I don't have many attacking spells, nor do I intend to get closer to these individuals. Um, am I able to uh, pull the arrow out of Tyus's knee? You can try. It would require a strength check, and or he might am be I able upset. To use, um, am I able to use healing word to, to heal him? Yes. So healing word is a bonus action. So you can still like do an attack okay. or, or, and move and then cast a uh, healing word as a bonus action. Okay. And it's got and it's got range, so you don't need to be close to him to do it. What oh, if I you got you. stand behind me so that they can no longer shoot you? Because I'll just be in the way. Yeah, and also these trees, um, if you move and hide behind one, they will count as cover. These are cover, okay. Yeah, uh Lipnar, give a healing word and then run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go cower behind. Can I cower behind this tree over here? You certainly can. Let me go cower behind this tree and then cast a healing word towards uh Tyus. I love how you guys were like uh not at all confident in his survival. <laughs> <laughs> You just run, little man. Um, okay, go ahead and going too well today. So uh, I'll just click on my uh, my token and uh, cast a healing word. Yep. Ooh. Nice. All right. So he's almost fully healed. Thank right, you. And that's it. And that's it for your your turn. Hopefully, you feel better, big man. <laughs> All right. So back to back to the guard who is now face to face with Boris the bugbear. And he's like, he just took a swing at me. Um, and so he's going to take a swing back with his scimitar. Oh, Jesus. no. Oh. Oh, they're far better with melee. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. So, so this is the first crit of the game. Uh, um, no. And he just smashed you. Jeez, <laughs> um, he, he just smashed you. Goodness. Um, Let's see here. So crit, I see HP. There you go. Now you're uh, down to five. Go ahead and roll a fudge die to see if you even remain conscious after taking such a smash. Oof. Okay, you are good. You are up. <laughs> the funny creature is still alive. Thank God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this guard um, up here is now going to fire a short bow at Brother Svensson. Let's see if he gets... And he Ooh. misses... It I'm was seeing you're all a bunch of cross-eyed fools. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. Svensson, you are up. Okay, uh, moderator. Um, I want, in such a battle. I want to try to make a run for the tower and take it. How would I go about doing this? Well, it's blocked. I uh, think you should attack somebody. Okay, uh, in that case, I'm running. Uh, ooh, this is interesting. I think I see a door symbol on the opposite side of the tower. I think that's how you'd get in without like climbing or being You're right. But I have to get past the gods. Um, I think I think I'm going to. Uh, Mark, do you here. want backup or do you, uh, should I give you? Should I give you backup or should I attack the flank on the left? Uh, spitballing here, C Stephen can't sneak attack right now, can he? Because he's wide open, right? So. He can um, try to hide as an action and then see how he does. And if he can hide successfully, he can, uh, he can potentially do a sneak attack. So Steven, you, uh, you, I don't think that's necessarily the best move right now. We need to start dealing damage. Yeah. I would say take another shot at one of the guards. Maybe the one that's a All little right. closer to me or one that's a little farther, whatever you want to do. So maybe the, okay, right. so, um, so this guy is down to two HP. For some reason he is, they're all linked. I think I broke something, but uh, oh. this guy's only got two HP, so one hit will kill him. Shoot him. All right, is he immobile at the moment, or can I? Sh should I finish him off? He's wheezing. Just you could, yeah, you could you could shoot him with your bow, or you could run up and start daggering. It's up to all you. Right, I'm running up to dagger. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. Go go forth and be be mighty. There we are. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Do the stabby stabby. Uh, we short sword or dagger, guys? Short sword or dagger? Short sword. I think the short, short sword, sword is more indeed. effective, yeah. Slashing it out. Normal rule submits. Ooh. How's that? Hang him into a force man kebab. <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and tell me how you kill him. Ah. 
Let's see. Ooh, a clean kill. Straight between the ribs, right up towards his shoulder. On the, on the left side, right to the heart. Okay. He did. Nice. <laughs> Rest in peace, fool. <laughs> I you wish you were, I wish you made better choices. <laughs> Steven. All right, Tyus. All right, Hulk smash. Okay, we're about to... I so better, I, you better get out of the way. So I'm going to move diagonally. Wait, oh. would I be able to stand, like, right here next to a person? Like, um... Like, come in here? Uh, no, to the left, to go attack the two guards all alone. I'd be yeah. able to... Okay. I see there's a little barricade there. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to move here. And I'm just going to. <laughs> I'm just going to smash this dude right here with a war hammer, two handed. Just going to, from, oh, from the top, just gone. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh my! Ooh. Okay, tell me how you, how you <laughs> annihilate. <laughs> how, how do you oh annihilate God. this human being? How do I smash from the like from my head all the way down, and he just becomes like like um. Jelly all of his log. all of his limbs just go flying at like Mach four, just in every direction. <laughs> so as as you obliterate the guy standing in front of you. The guy behind him, who is now just covered in pink <laughs> Lego studs of what used to be his buddy, um, is now completely horrified and is beating feet the other way. He right. has he's essentially surrendered and he's gone. <laughs> oh my God. He, he is we leaving. The, he is leaving the battlefield. I hit him with um, a <laughs> So, um, the next Forestman Bandit uh, is going to try his luck with Tyus, and he's going to run up to you. He can try, try to. Lad. <laughs> and he's going to try and engage you with his scimitar. Oh, he thinks. Oh, and he gets you for five mm. points of damage. Man, Does that, that do anything like against people attacking, or does that just increase my armor class? What? Having a shield. It just increases your armor class. Okay. Just checking. All right. These scimitars, hurt. man, they're they're uh, no joke. Nasty they're hitting weapon. hard. All right, Boris. Nasty Elvish blades. All right. Uh, there's a, a guy right in front of me. I just whiffed him, and, and my swords kind of like just smacked the dirt. But I pull it back, and I say, Hrugik, give me strength. And I thrust it right at him, straight on. So. Okay. Let me roll my Barely thing. standing here. was a wild thrust. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. you you annihilate him. <laughs> That's uh, right. better than it was before. Uh, right With between the eyes. One shot. Yep. And then he's gone. Thunk. So you pop his little brick head off with a little <laughs> poop. And it just goes rolling down the road. And his torso is just kind of running around in the other direction. Perfect. Um, as it was written. <laughs> <laughs> so next up is the is the guard that's uh doing the run around so he's he's just gonna go further away um <laughs> and he has disappeared from the battlefield blipnar you are up there's one more blipnar can i get a <laughs> healing word blipnar <laughs> blipnar wants to heal the funny looking creature blipnar will start a healing word at him okay go ahead Yes. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'll take it. <laughs> Anything else you want to do, Blipnar? Oh, that's what I can do. I can move in and do that spell. You're right. Um, yeah. you how about spells. your mount? It's just kind of laying there. Wait, uh, is there anything? Mount Chicken's just a frog. He's just hanging out. He's not involved in this battle. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just kind of sitting there in the middle of the road, just like. <laughs> and then as the guard turns around. Um, let's see. Is there anything you this, can do with that one guard, He's on top of the tower. I can't reach him at all, correct? Uh, not in the, you could dash and get up to the top of the tower, but then he would just, you would just be staring at each other. Don't you have a, yeah. you can like throw at him or something? 
you have ice knife, but you've already cast a spell. So um, I can't cast another. You can't cast another. Um, I am going to uh, stay put, but I am going to move Mountain Chicken to Boris for comfort. <laughs> there we go. Right back. Mountain Chicken joins you. <laughs> All right, Brother Svensson, you are up. All right, I'm going to make a sprint for the door if I'm allowed to do that. Should I like examine it or how should I do this? I'm going to make a move for this guy in the tower. Uh, I think just so, like, charge so the, the yeah. So the base the base answer um, from a DM when you say should I investigate something is right. that that depends on you. Uh, how much risk are you willing to assume? I will investigate the door. Now, if you do that, you're going to stop your forward momentum and that will be your action. So when you think about it, right, things I should enter your calculus is, does it make sense that this door would be trapped? Probably not. No, it's just a dig in the door and run through it. (laughs) The water. Okay. I'm in, I'm in the heat of a moment. I'll be in character. I do not inspect the door. I kick it down. Okay. Uh, you you kick into the open air. And notice that the door is already open. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, they should have inspected it. <laughs> the ale's All still right. kicking in. All right. And I continue my charge. Is that possible? Yes. Ah, I make a run up the stairs. So you and I make to the top door. Here. So and you would you would get to the top of the ladder, um, and now you're kind of staring at this forceman bandit. You still have your action. So you could you Shoot could him. attack him with your short bow if you wanted to. Mm. Shoot him off the tower. Shoot him! Put the hole in his gut! Good idea. <laughs> Bring the Jeez. bow. Fire an arrow. Blipnar chose violence. <laughs> We're on an adventure! <laughs> Blipnar just wants to see the world burn. <laughs> I mean, after the battle, he's just going to walk over to Tyus's kills and just like be like messing with all the entrails. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This is the greatest thing ever. Ha ha. He's like a demented Mickey Mouse. <laughs> what? All right, you know, go ahead and roll. I fire, a bow. I fire an arrow. Let's see. A uh, short bow. Yep, Normal row. Ooh. Ooh. And you actually, you miss him. Unfortunately, you uh-huh. missed him by one. You missed him by one, but he knows you're there now. Grazed him. Oh, lovely. Yeah. All right, Tyus, you are up next, and you've got one forest man in your face. I should have done sneak attack. Oh, oh never mind. Mm. All right, two-handed warhammer. I'm going to hit him like I'm holding a baseball bat. I mean, he's just going to go. <laughs> We're going to see. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Tyus okay. is a home run. <laughs> so, oh, so you. <laughs> So go ahead and roll a athletics check for me. I want to see if you actually <laughs> knock him back. Okay. Oh, it's loading. Athletics. Okay, you knock him back. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. So he is he is now prone. Um and he is not, not doing well. Um as you basically smacked um his left arm off um with your baseball bat. Um <laughs> So it's 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 his turn next, and uh, he gets up, and he's like, "Yeah, nah," and just takes off. <laughs> I can hear his labored breathing. So he's gone. He he's left his arm on the floor here, um, but he's gone. Lipnar, keep that for later. All right, Boris, you are up. All right. Um, is it possible for me to reach the last guard in the tower on this turn? If you dash, yes. If you dash, you get double your movement speed, but that counts as your action. Okay, so then I wouldn't be able to attack him then, right? So. No, but you would you would be in his face at that point, so he would be kind of hosed either way. Steven, how many hit points do you have real quick? I have 11 hit points. Okay, that's more than I me, think. so I'm not going to do that. I am going to stand right outside the door with my sword ready in case he tries to run. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea yeah ambush him yep i'm gonna be right around the corner in fact can i hide by the, the outside of the door just in case he tries to get out yeah go ahead and roll stealth okay let me get on stealth here uh boris that's a good idea actually no one's getting out 
without your permission. <laughs> and, and you'll have to roll at disadvantage because I think oh. you're wearing heavy armor. Okay, let me... Uh... Actually, no, you did. You already did. Because um, you see the two numbers that pop up. Gotcha. It automatically <laughs> computes. So my macros are working. Yay. 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 Okay, so, so you, I'm going to put a little ninja mask on you. You are stealthily hidden by the door. And you've readied your action to smack whatever comes out of there. As long as it's an enemy. <laughs> Say yes. You are cool, yeah. green man. Okay. You, thankfully, you specified that because that would have been <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I'm um, not going to kill Steven. <laughs> well, what did you um, specify, Mark? I missed that. What did you specify? I says as long as it's an enemy, not Steven. So I can recognize yeah, what Steven I'll... looks like. He's different than the, the, the guard. So, yeah. All right. All right. So now Blipnar the bloody... <laughs> worship, worshiper, worshiper of ball. <laughs> you could uh, try and hit the last guy there, Blipnar, if you want to, or you send another healing word. So. Oh, doesn't Tyrus need healing? Maybe. I don't know. Me and I mean, Tyrus are both hurt, but I'm gonna say y'all are both down. I'm gonna say um, Bo- uh, Boris is lower, correct? So, in terms of like economy. Um, they're actually at about half health, so they're not okay. that bad off. Not too I, bad. I would save, especially since you only have like I think you're out of spell slots because you cast Healing Word twice now. I did. So mm-hmm. you, you don't have any more spells. You only have cantrips. Okay. Um, so I would, if you have a cantrip that you want to use, I would use that. Like maybe cast Guidance on uh, someone that you can get to. Um, but other than that, you're pretty much out of uh, you're out of resources. Very well, very well. Um, I actually don't think you can make it to anybody. I don't think so either. Yeah, so if you want to see where your, your spells are on your character sheet, you'll have three buttons at the top right. That'll be core, bio, and spells. Okay, okay, there. So spells, and then are, are there cantrips under spells? Yes. yes so you'll see, see there. yeah, you'll see them. So you also have minor illusion, mm-hmm. which is one of your racial feats. So you can actually cast a minor illusion like right by the guard to distract him. Oh, okay. That's okay. So that's nice. Oh, whoops. I think I clicked it. No, that's fine. So now when you do it like that, I can actually read what the description is. And so can you, and you can decide what that is going to be. So you can have someone, you can make a noise um uh, a lion's roar beating of drums all that stuff you can create an image of an object so if you want to huck a little image of mountain chicken right next to the guard where he's just like what the heck is that you can okay um so did that spell reach it, you've got a range of 30 feet on that bad boy so okay yeah you can get it to him okay so um Blipnar cast an illusion of mountain chicken sitting on the guard's sword. <laughs> now, did you actually like yell that in the heat of battle, or? <laughs> I think he did. Me uh, describing what the spell did. Okay, but but you didn't yell it to be clear, right? Uh, no. Do okay. Because the, yeah. the guard would be like, okay. okay I didn't know if I had to like, verbally like say it for it to be cast. Nah, nah, you can, you're good. We're figuring uh, out the yeah. logic uh, right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so the spell, the spell uh, summons a, an illusion of the little frog sitting on the guard's tip of his sword. Okay, so he is uh, distracted, so attacks against him will have advantage. <laughs> Brothers Fenson, you are up. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, where do I go from here? Hmm. Well, I think we're gonna. The bow didn't work, so we're gonna make a lunge for him, if that's all right. With our short sword drawn. Okay. For for a um. Let's see. For a straightforward thrust. And just make sure you select advantage when it asks you how to roll. Advantage. Advantage to make yep. that. Ah, yep. thank God. All right, that is enough to hit him. So he takes seven points of damage. So he's like, ouch. I'm in the middle um, of a fight here. <laughs> and that's it for you. Next up is Tyus. All right. Um, 
Let's see. Where's all the people that ran away? Are they like way gone by now? Oh yeah, they're gone. They're they're okay. gone. Way they gone. could have used their information. Oh no, I was thinking about just squishing them as they ran, but yeah. <laughs> um let's see. Hmm. Gonna try to do a stealth check and hide on the other side of the door. <laughs> I don't know what else to do, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna let Steven handle it by himself. You can't get in there then, right, Tyus? That's too far to reach. Is no, I'm just the door? No, I'm just on the opposite side of the door from him. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so that would, yeah, just being on the opposite side of the door would be his full movement. Yeah, okay. Uh, and we're gonna roll a what? What, should, what do I do? Stealth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic just a normal military stealth. approach. I I really don't know how a seven an eight foot tall heavy armor Goliath succeeded on a stealth check, but <laughs> you're <laughs> made and he did it. Wow, he works miracles. you you guys are hidden. Um, so we've got we've got two little ninjas hiding in front of the. Uh, Little ninjas. Uh, in the door. <laughs> One big furry bugbear and the other a heavily armored Goliath. <laughs> Nobody can see them. They're hidden. Me- meanwhile, Steven's going toe-to-toe. <laughs> the, this is the opposite of what it should be. Oh. And, <laughs> Blip- really and Blipnar's down there just like, Blood! <laughs> <laughs> this is the best day ever! <laughs> Entrails everywhere! <laughs> All right. So it's my turn. Uh, I'm still in stealth. Can I sneak attack? You can try to sneak up to him. As I'm um, and you don't. You actually don't have sneak attack, so you can just make yeah. an attack at advantage. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Let's let's do that. I since I think I can reach. Okay, go ahead and move on up. Okay. I'll say I'm next to Steven. I spend sit up there. And uh, I'll okay. just go for a great sword. In this case, it's uh, slightly angled downwards uh, from above, but not too high because the ceiling is pretty uh, shallow in this building. But anyway, great sword at advantage. Yep. Oh boy! <laughs> so you miss. Uh, <laughs> Keep missing. Even even oh even with advantage, and you are no longer hidden because as you're like trying to stealthily smash him with your greatsword, you smash into the ceiling, knock a lantern down, and bring the sword down through a window, and you're like, oh. Sorry. <laughs> Crash, yeah. Okay. That throw really did a number on him. <laughs> but the best part of a concussion. The best part of that is, is like you're doing this while you're like kind of like crouched like in Skyrim, and so the guardsman is just kind of like staring at you, and you're like, because you still think you're hidden. <laughs> oh, it, who's there? Must have been the wind. <laughs> All right, Blifnar, you're up. All right, all right. Um, man, there is not a whole lot to do at the moment. You want to come sneak around to the other side of the door with me? I don't know. I can, I can reach it. Yeah, probably not. You want to just start making your way over to just, like, be with the rest of us? I am going to move uh, over to Mountain Chicken, and we are going to set up a tea party. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes. Perfect. All right, moving on. (laughs) All right, Svensson. Uh, Your opponent here is over here, fool. I lunch at him again with, let's see... Uh, I'm in the middle of a fight. I don't think I'm going to draw my bow. I'm going to go short sword again. Okay. All right. No advantage. Nope. Just normal. Right, here it is. Let's finish this. And that is enough. I got him. All right. Should I say something more? <laughs> no, no, you, you, you did it. You done did it. He did. Oh, how about this? How about this? How about this? Down down the top of the tower. Listen, 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 listen. After I stab him, I do a bit of a crucifix and mumble a silent prayer. (laughs) Okay. All right. So you guys are now out of combat. You have about, you know, four or five bodies of forestmen bandits in front of you. Two of them escaped to the northeast. So you have the option of pursuing 
or you can continue on to the Black Falcon uh, fortress and see if maybe you can get hired to find the camp because you realize there's probably a camp nearby. I say we... Uh, no again. one gets away with it. Pursue them? Guys, <laughs> this one false man looks like a smushed blueberry from you. <laughs> 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 oh boy! I, I'm just imagining him over there, just like <laughs> plopping in it. You're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> uh, Boris, Boris, uh, Captain. Perhaps one of us should examine the bodies and see where these bizarre fellows came from. Yes. Uh, who has the highest uh, um, insight here? I have rolled the insight the last. You do time have a high did. insight. Uh, I have a plus three. Uh, what do you guys have? Oh, wait a second. I guess we could all roll insight and see if we could find anything out about these guys. So, Every- so for this, so for this, when they're dead, um, you don't roll insight. Uh, you oh. roll investigation because you're searching them. Insight is a I skill where you're like, you're like gauging how they're talking to you, their demeanor, ah, okay. you know how they look, their body language. Oh, I did not get high investigation. That's fine. We're just taking a second to look around, see if there's anything that's obvious of where they came from, or if we can track them down. So. They yeah, were so rolling can, investigation too? Yeah, all of you can roll investigation. All that I saw that they were men in tights. Okay, so Boris, um, you find um, four naked guards, kind of <laughs> deceased. They're the legitimate guards, um, and they have been murdered in the tower. Mm. Um, all of them are kind of in their, in their undergarments, but they have dog tags around their necks. All right. Um, I think I'm going to take the dog tags and we'll bring them with us so we can just, uh, warn the castle a ways away that this outpost has been compromised. Okay. So So you're going to take all, oh, sorry. Brick tags. I forgot they're brick brick tags. tags. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to take their little brick tags. Uh, and bring them back to their superiors. They're set numbers. But okay. um, now here's the next decision we have. Is there any? There was nothing else from that roll. The the foresters had nothing on them. I think. So the forestmen all have forestmen sigils on their tunics. Mm-hmm. Um, and you remember from your time working for the Black Falcons that there is a bounty for each forestman bandit that's brought in alive, which is a hundred gold pieces per live prisoner. And fifty gold pieces per evidence of each forestman slain. Ah. All right, we're gonna take no. all the eyeballs, <laughs> no, no. and we're gonna cut out the forester signal on uh, from each shirt, so, so we don't have to carry these guys. So. <laughs> what about the guys that? What about the guy who is like a fine paste? That's why I said all the eyeballs. Hopefully, we could find an eyeball or a tooth or something, maybe, maybe in a jaw, eye something that defines it as a human. So. Yeah, okay. So your human not has a rib bone. <laughs> no, so taking- more than a rib. We have more than one of those. <laughs> so okay, so so you you gather up, I guess. The, How about their ears? The eyeballs. Ears, ears, ears. Let's do ears. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna take. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so <laughs> this, you- is, this is grotesque. All right. So you, you're you're taking the sigils and the eyeballs and the brick tags. Yeah. Um, and you're gonna continue on to the fortress. Yeah, I think that's the call. We're all a little beat up. Okay. So. So I guess you're just gonna you're just gonna put the ears in like a baggie. Yeah, we got a little uh, sack no, here. No, we'll put them on a necklace. <laughs> no, 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 Flipnar, no necklaces. That's a little too much. So. All oh, right, a bag. I feel I like dr- Flip Flipnar Ew. should have been a, a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> he's been a, he's been alone too long. We need to get him back into society. All right, let's go. All right. So no uses for ears. <laughs> I, I can't the, like just the image of this little druid just <laughs> bathing in viscera. He, he's, okay. he's just a little guy who's lived in a mushroom for years. <laughs> he's done nothing besides hang out with animals and just pick grass and, and have a smoke pipe. Exactly. <laughs> so as as you guys are traveling, um, you come up to another um, toll booth, essentially a guard post, which is in Black Falcon hands. 
Um, and there's nothing untowards at this particular location, but you've, it's already, it's late in the day since you fought. And so they offer you a kind of sheltered, like, a barn to kind of stay, uh, since you as Boris, you co- you carry a Black Falcon mercenary company sigil. Um, they're like, okay, you're entitled to stay in the guardhouse if you want to for the night. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so if you guys are going to rest, everybody go ahead and click the long rest button on your character sheet. Going in. And it should reset everything. Where is that going to be located? Music, good sleep. Character sheet. Oh, Where'd long rest. Perfect. Next day you get up, uh, the guards provide you with uh, food, uh, a breakfast, so that you can be on your way. And you guys, you guys make it to the Black Falcon Fortress about midday. Um, as you guys are coming into the gate, uh, one of the guards kind of looks to you and says, you know, everybody has to go see the commander before they, they go any further. All right, let's go in. Talk to the commander. All right. So the commander kind of looks you up and down and says, did you encounter any trouble on your way? We certainly did, Commander. We encountered several foresters in the guise of Lion Knight guards, and uh, they attacked us. We suffered a few injuries, um, but we killed several before two, I think, fled into the woods. And uh, we have the, a few uh, a few samples of remains and a few tattered garments with their symbols as evidence. How many did we kill again, Malister? Four? Four. Yeah. Four perished before us. The rest escaped. But there may be one more because one of them, uh, he's, he, we couldn't pick anything off of him. <laughs> no, that, I think we actually got it, the pieces from him, so he's fine, right? So. Yeah, 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 you were yeah. able to recover. Even though he was a fine, like... <laughs> he was a miss, yeah. Um, his okay. sigil was metal, so... Yeah. Gotcha. Um, it smells so, really bad, too. Here are the, the four brick tags of the fallen lion knights. Uh, they can be uh, identified from there. So. so the guard captain kind of looks you up and down and says, you know, you've done the kingdom a great service by recovering these brick tags. Um, it's, it's not a gesture that a lot of people do that haven't served. Um, but recovering these tags will give us, will give the families of the fallen closure. Um, and so he, uh, goes into a little chest that he has on the table and he pulls, starts counting out some gold coins. He's like, for each of the forest men that you've slain, it's 50 gold pieces per, so 200 gold for them. Um, and for each brick tag that you've recovered, I will give you 25 additional gold pieces. So that's a hundred for the four. And so 300 gold pieces is your bounty. Uh, can you point out on the map what outpost was compromised? It uh, was the one at the right angle on the road. If I can, I don't think I can click anywhere. Hold on, Let's see. But this one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So we, we so, I described the. Is does it have a name? I don't think it has a name. It was the first outpost on the way from the coast. No, pointing out on the map is sufficient. So yeah. the guard captain uh, goes to his lieutenant and he dispatches a patrol to recover the bodies and take the guard post back. Uh, he looks to you and he says, uh, I understand you have a meeting with the Baron. Uh, when you are done with that, I will offer you 300 gold plus the bounty and the securing of any equipment you find if you can hunt down the camp from which these bandits came from. Mm. Yeah. We will see if we have time. Thank you. Boris, okay. we're rich. We're rich. <laughs> <laughs> yes, can it's a we, decent sound right there. We can uh, can we divide the the gold evenly among the four of us? So. Yeah, you can oh, yo, yo. So oh, from, that gnome. So from here on moving out like whatever you recover loot wise whether it's money or equipment, it's on you guys to decide how you distribute it. Yeah. I say we uh, it, go for the, the carry. And if you if you look down on your character sheet, there's actually insets for just underneath attacks and spell casting for your, how much money you have. Um, so if you're going to split it, or you, someone's going to like hold all of it as like kind of like a party loot thing, go ahead and make sure that you're keeping track of the money that you have. 
Um, yeah, do we want to have oh, a yeah. designated money carrier, or do we want us each to have an even amount? Now, we're playing with weight counting, right? No, encumbrance oh. is off. Okay, this good. Is your first then, yeah, just throw all the gold on, and each person has their own gold, so it's fine. Okay, that way, yeah, yeah. How much did that divide up to um, four ways? My math skills are terrible. Maybe that was remember. 50 per body. 50 per body, I believe. 50 plus 25, so 75 each? Yeah, 75 each. Yeah, yeah. So now I have 85. Excellent. So. Oh, wait a minute. I had 15 to begin with already in here. Do I just add 75 to that? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Th th yeah that's your starter gold. Okay, so that was, that's what? I'm going to get a calculator. Increase. Uh -huh. I had five gold. I found one coin on the ground. It was like, <laughs> it, ooh, shiny. <laughs> it'd be 90. It'd be 90. 15 plus 75 is 90. Oh, thank yep. you. Uh, yeah. I like Very it's nice. Good, good All right. Cause. So we uh, we make our way over to talk to Baron Aaron Stradwick. Okay. So as you're coming up uh, into the, the audience chamber, um, the steward of the Black Falcon Fortress kind of walks up alongside you, and he's been tasked to kind of give you the lowdown brief before you walk in to see um, the Baron. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's kind of telling you over time, and, and he says, you know, just so you know, I'm sure you've heard that King Leo the Lion has died. Um, we have peace between what? the Dragon Masters. Yes, he recently passed away about you know two months ago, but you guys have been in the field. Mm -hmm. um, and oh. so the problem is, is that he died without an heir. Um, so, so his closest living relative is Baron Stradwick. Um, he... He was called to the Yellow Castle to discuss terms of ascension. Uh, however, uh, shortly after he got there, it was revealed that Queen Leonera was with child, supposedly Leo's heir. Um, Stradwick does not believe that Leo was capable of siring an heir in his final years, let alone his final days. Um, but despite this and his protestations, he was driven out of the capital by the other great houses. Um, and so he's returned here and he started mobilizing his entire army uh, yeah. to seize the throne from the usurpers. So even though King Leo has just established peace, it looks like the Lion Kingdom is on the verge of a civil war. And mm -hmm. that is what Stradwick has called you here to talk about. And as he... As he says that, he kind of gives you like a dismissive gesture, like, I don't have time for questions. That's your brief. Yep. And in you go. And he ushers you into the main hall where you see Aaron Stradwick um, standing uh, at the edge of the great hall. Um, and so this is who you see, Aaron Stradwick. Yep. You can see a pop up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a fine and black he, armor he's got there. Very and fine. He, he's very handsome. He's standing with his back to you, um, kind of looking out the window. I shout and boo. What's that? I shout I boo. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Quiet, you big galoosie. Quiet. So he just kind of, with his arms behind his back, he just kind of bellows. He's like, greetings, adventurers. I have a mission for you. It will be dangerous and not something that you are used to. <laughs> and then he just kind of pauses. I have lived in it. this continent. Yeah, I can't take it. Things. <laughs> you have no doubt heard that my ascension to the throne is no longer reality. Apparently... Queen Leonora is with child. Leo's heir, uh, if you believe the rumors. And you see his kind of shoulders slump like he's disappointed. Um, and it kind of pains him to say that. They, I do not believe that our beloved King Leo sired an heir. I need you to help me prove that this is a conspiracy to destroy the Lion Kingdom. How does this affect who rules the Lion's kingdom? Right we are now, we leave, we leave lands many a time. Through. I'm getting 
getting a lot of feedback. Yeah. Uh, I think it's coming from you, Garrett. From me? Yeah. Uh-oh. Turn the input down a little bit if you can. Hold up. Let me see. I did not hear a thing that Harrison said, yeah. Test, test, test. Looks good That's now. Better. Is that, that any better? better? Yeah, it's Hello? good now. All right. Much better. Try again, Harrison. You were trying to say something? Oh, yeah. Um, no. Why do, why do these politics affect us travelers? We leave these lands many a times throughout the years. I, uh, I look over to uh, Tyus and say, because work is work and a good job can pay well. So. Ah, fair enough. If I may be so bold as to speak up, your grace, what happened to his majesty, King Leo? He will be sorely missed, but I, I query as to his death. If you believe the rumors, he died of old age. Interesting. But I was not able to see the body, nor were any of the traditional medical staff. A very King suspicious Leo, manner. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, King Leo, the lion, was a good man. He was a brave king and a solid leader. He gave the realm peace. He lost everything in the war with the Dragon Masters. His two wives, his two sons. I'll be darned if I let usurpers steal his legacy. I suspect that the three great factions, the Crown Knights, the Red Lion Knights, and the Royal Knights are up to something. I'm not sure what it is, but they must have either done something to Queen Leonara or she is in on it as well. I suspect that the Dominion is involved. I want you two to go to the capital to find out what's going on. I will grant you all the titles and land should you succeed. If you fail, it cannot be discovered that you are Black Falcons. I chose you because you are relatively unknown to the other factions. A civil war is coming, and I cannot be seen as the aggressor. But I also cannot stand idly by while the kingdom we fought for is destroyed. Your contact in the capital will be my spy master, Albrecht Stormlord. He will meet he will meet you at the trip away in. Very well, Baron. We will try our best to find the truth and hopefully secure your throne. Now, this is your opportunity, like a little bit of meta, to ask questions, right? Because mm -hmm. he's given you kind of like the surface. Um, and so now you can ask for clarifying information and see if he's willing to give you any. Let's each ask one question. And it could be crazy in the case of uh, Garrett's character. But uh, I'm going to start. Um, w do you have any advice as to where we should start? Should we investigate the queen herself? Any connections leading up to the announcement of the expected child? Do you have any advice to start? Albrecht will see to that. He has been casing and spying on notable parties in the capital for about a month now. Of he course. will brief you when you arrive. I have a question. Yes. You say that civil war is brewing. Uh, which Do you know of which forces are gathering and where? Uh, so as you know, we are a feudal kingdom. Each of the factions have their own army that serve under the Lion King banner. So the Falcon army, the Black Falcons, are mustering here at the Falcon Fortress. The, uh, the, red, the Crown Lands, or the, the Crown Knights, will probably be mustering their forces at the Yellow Castle. The Royal Knights will probably be mustering their forces at the Royal Knight Castle. And then the Red Lion Knights will probably be, for, be mustering their forces at King's Castle. They'll probably all uh, merge on the Yellow Castle to secure their throne and their power there. Very good. Any other questions? <clears throat> Where is our loves and adventure? But are we starting your civil war? No. One of the things that I Very haven't well. told you yet. Uh, is that the reason I think this is going to get bad is because my spy master believes he saw Majesto in the capital shortly before the queen announced she was with a yeah. child. 
That's bad. <clears throat> oh, no. It's a demon child. <laughs> the, the, so, as you understand, I had my scholars working a royal lineage project in the, with the royal bookkeepers in the, brick, in the brick library. They mysteriously disappeared after they sent me a note saying that they found something. I suspect that they're dead. They were working out of the Lion Brick Library in the capital. Perhaps they have left something behind that you can find. Mm-hmm. Uh, shit. At Lion Brick Capital, where's that? Royal so the Lion Brick... Library. Yeah, Royal Brick the, Library, okay, cool. The Lion Brick Library is Lion in Brick. the Yellow Castle, which is the capital. Perfect. Interesting. Do you have any additional questions? I have a question. What's your question? What are we to meet this spy of yours? In the, a trip away in. He will meet you at the inn. All right. <laughs> okay. No, so I, I, one, oh, go ahead. I mean, what, one last final question, if I may be so bold as to ask two questions. But um, is there a route you'd recommend to this yellow castle? Well, we can figure that out. But yeah, go ahead. Oh, very well. Very well. So I will provide you with horses and a stipend of 500 gold to cover your expenses. Oh. You will also receive merchant visas. You are to enter the capital as merchants. Do not wear your banner colors or identify yourselves as falcons when you're in the capital. If anyone discovers your identities, you are to eliminate them as a threat. I cannot oh. iterate enough how much this must remain a secret. Should my subterfuge be discovered, the conspirators will know that I am on to them and it will be the end of the Falcons. As strong as we are, we cannot stand against all three factions united against us. Very well. <laughs> this right. will be an adventure. <laughs> I offer you the night's quarters for the night. You are to leave at first light. I will have a merchant wagon prepped for you and filled with some general goods to be sold at the merchant stalls at the trip away in. It will await you in the courtyard tomorrow morning. Once you find enough evidence to implicate the conspirators, return here to me to discuss our next moves. Albrecht will facilitate your ability to move in and out of the capital at your leisure. There we go. Lovely. We'll go talk to Albrecht. I'm going to... Do we turn in for the night? Um, um, friends, Blutnar cannot ride a horse. <laughs> May I ride in one of your bags? <laughs> yes. Gary, I, I have a pouch. I, believe, I actually think I have a, um, a thieves pouch you could ride in, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Snack. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Are we staying the night or are we going to move out right away? What's going on? Yeah, we just oh. go to our rooms. Light. Leave. He said... Yeah, you'll leave at first light. It's going to take you a, a, a full day of travel to get there. It's about midday. Mm -hmm. um, Does anything so happen we, in our rooms? No, no, nothing. Okay. Uh, you can, if you want to study like a language or something, you can. Otherwise, we can just fast forward time and just put you on the road. Uh, we can go on the road. Can we long rest? I'm still not full HP. That's right. Long rest, maybe. I'm getting echo again. Big one. Okay. Okay, we're back. Okay. Uh, yeah, I see you at, at full HP. Uh, I thought it was 14 Whoa. before 11 is a little low. Yeah, it's a, it does say full HP, but it was, I think it was, wasn't it 14 earlier? No, I don't think you were 14. I think, uh, I was, unless, I think Tyre, Tyus was 14. Okay. Yeah, Tyus is 14. You're, you're 11. Unless I screwed something up, but. I have 11 hit points. Oh, right. So. Your travel to the capital is relatively uneventful. Um, no issues whatsoever. Uh, you provide your merchant visa to the to the folks at the gates, and they let you in, and they point you in the direction of the tripway. Um, and as you guys kind of pull up, you see the inn. It's a rather big place. Sorry, it's not Lego. I didn't have time to build this whole thing. Um, <laughs> And uh, you guys have been instructed to kind of find a table and that Albrecht will find you. So my screen is guys, black. 
Oh, because you haven't appeared yet. Stand by one second. Okay. Bloop. Mm. Bloop. Oh. Bloop. You must be oh, patient, cool. Mom. Okay. Bloop. And bloop. You're going to get the full experience of dynamic lighting in this map design now. So well, this is huge. <laughs> okay, okay. So you are in the tavern. This will basically be your base of operations while you're conducting your mission inside the capital in the Lion Knight's kingdom. Every NPC that you see has quests for you. Um, Whoa. So you have a huge amount of side quests you can do in addition to the main mission. This is kind of meta talk right now. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, you can just kind of do whatever you want. Do you want to, if you want to gamble, I've got some gambling games for you. Um, so you, you know, want, like, like Tyus may want to try a drinking game. Um, we've got a menu of foods and drinks if you guys want to eat. Bloop, bloop. There you go. <laughs> a full menu? That's insane. Menu. I still just yep. got a black box. Oh, we need to drop oh. Garrett in there? Yeah, you may have to refresh. Oh, oh. Garrett is still in my pouch. <laughs> oh, I see his darkness. Please, I, I, want, I want a pint. <laughs> a pint? Can you do I'm trying to get the button undone there. Uh, hold, hold tight. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you out of this bag in a moment there, Noom. I think it was oh. just taking a minute. Yeah, this map is... The, the the tavern Whoa, is huge. Okay, yeah, no, I see it now. Whoa! I have to zoom yeah. out. I'm All on right, my, so old, my old laptop. I think that's what it was. Dude, <laughs> whoa! Yeah, so you guys have the opportunity to grab a table, um, order what you would like from the menu, and just kind of hang out for a while and see if Albrecht shows up. I would like to stand at the bar instead of sit at the table. <laughs> okay, You're a that's bigger. fine. Oh, this is huge. <laughs> no, now, my drink was me. Now, these benches are built to uh, accommodate half works and goliaths and, and uh, medium giants, so they, they will fit you. Um, oh, uh, if you would like to challenge, there is a gentleman, uh, Sir Dwayne Dantas, who uh, likes to challenge people to drinking games. Oh, I will challenge him to a Game. <laughs> <laughs> I see him. Oh. Hello, All Mr. right. So let's give the rules of the pub game. So the drinking contest is basically you each put down how much gold you want to wager. And there are five rounds. Um, whoever is left standing at the end of the five rounds wins. And so you drink and you roll con saves over and over and over again to see if uh, you pass out. Yeah. Um, and that's how we do it. Whoever, if you choke and begin vomiting or get knocked out of the contest, then you lose. Um, you can have more than two people play. So if, if anyone else wants to join in, feel free. And we can have our first drinking contest. Let's see. Uh, It'll be a con constitution saving throw. So, gotcha. come here, Noam. Come drink with us. Blimla blim wants a pint. All right, <laughs> all right. I, I'll uh, I'll join in because I have a good constitution save. I should should be okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm so staying by the fire. I want the warmth. <laughs> I want to drink. All right. So, how many of you are drinking? It's going to be Tyus, Boris, and Blipnar. Mm -hmm. yep. yes. I'm okay, going to save my money. How much gold are you wagering? I will wager 50 gold. 50? 15? 50, five zero. Holy okay. cow. Okay. It's going big. Okay. 50 I'll wager. Gold for Tyus. I'm, I'm just going to be a gentleman and wager five. So. Five for Boris. Blivna has two shiny five gold tokens. Blivna will wager 10. Yeah. Uh, Death Gnome will do 10. <laughs> Oh boy. And Sir Daywin, um, he likes to live dangerously. He's going to wager 400 gold. Oh, Whoa. Okay. I, I glance over my shoulder at the amount of money I hear. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> all of you go ahead and roll uh, initiative. Okay. And that, that will determine the order in which you roll your constitution saving throws. What do we got here? Initiative? Wait, oh, that's not there. Wait, that's here. I got it. 
Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Critical fail. All right, Blipnar, go ahead and roll your initiative. You rolled a 15? You didn't appear. Is that, is that what it was? I didn't oh, you, tab, you, the... Yeah, you didn't have your token. Um, I'll, I'll add you in. Don't worry about it. Oh, my bad. Oh, I'll uh, be right back. I'll be right back. I got two initiatives. Lord. It happens. It happens. Looks like a four initiative for Sir Daywin, too, so... Unless that's uh, 17 is his initiative. Yeah, 17 is his initiative. Okay. He has a dex modifier in there, so. Hmm. Okay, so Sir Daywin's going to roll his constitution saving throw first. So, oh boy, he has a con plus six. Oh my. We match each other then. So his first save, he looks at his drink and says, Is this water? <laughs> Next up is Blipnar. Roll your constitution saving throw. Oh boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Blipnar's Blipnar, going down. Blipnar vomits and passes out. <laughs> <laughs> Blipnar said he only wanted a pint. <laughs> <laughs> he it's as big as him. It's like drinking a barrel for him. Alright, uh, I'm next. All right, Blipnar is out. He rolls his eyes and looks back in the flames. <laughs> All right, so make sure you uh, make sure you subtract your your ten gold. You're not getting it back. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right, Boris. Oh no! A oh, bad Boris roll. is out. You choke and pass out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tyus, you're up. I gotta awesome. remove my five. Just normal roll. Oh yeah! Ooh, you, you, you look him right in the eye and you say, "Is this water? What is this swill?" All this right, big man can drink. <laughs> we are at round two. I stumble so, over to the table. Sir, oh, Day- fire there, Boris. <laughs> it's good for the soul. Sir Daywin, and he is again. Is this water? Hmm. Oh yeah. Now you you rolled so high, so you rolled twice because you have advantage on your next save. Ooh. Yeah. So go ahead and roll again. Okay, so yeah. you have it has. You're at round two, no effect. So you are still in it to win it. Yeah. All right. Four rounds. Say again. Four or five rounds. How many? Five rounds. If you're, if either of you are not eliminated, we keep going. Gotcha. So we go until one of you passes out. Mm-hmm. All right, Sir Daywin. And he passes. No effect. Good Lord. Okay. Here we go. Slam down another one. <laughs> and you pass. No effect. We are at round four. This is the entire game. Oh my gosh. And he makes it. Yup. Oh, how are they doing this? They're drinking an entire lake. <laughs> <laughs> I and I slam down another one. Oh. <laughs> and you black out. Tyus. <laughs> no. no. Uh, All right. right. He had a plus was- saving throw. <laughs> All right, so um, Sir Daywin kind of looks you up and down and says, you know what? That was the farthest anyone's gotten in a while. I'll give you 200 gold. We'll split yeah. it. Yeah. Jolly I'm good off. game. Come back again and we'll fight. We'll do this again. A very gracious man. Yup. Oh, cool. can Wait. I give 10 back? I lost my five too, so... Yeah, you can, a, you can split the money however you want. If you want to give it back to everybody or just keep it and rub it in their noses. Hey, Blipnar, I'll give you 10 and Boris, I'll give you five. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Tyus. Yeah. Blipnar is rich. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Blipnar. Just look bad. All, All right. right. So. I start to gaze around the room, attempting to find a, a waiter, a waitress, a barmaid of some sort. 
someone to uh, to use this menu which I've found at the side of the table here. Is there any such person about? Is that the right way of asking, like, how do I buy some food, or is this just for fun? Oh, yeah. If you want to order food, you just say what you want, and a tavern mistress will just bring it to you. There's ah, barmaids good. all over the place. Ah, yes. I, I flag one down with my ringed hand. I say... Uh, the sword swallow is stew. Seems a bit, bit. Yeah, it sounds like it warm the soul. Uh, but bring a bowl for me and a uh, small teaspoon full for this mountain chicken here. <laughs> it looks, he looks hungry. She looks at you and says, Fantastic. I'll have it right out. Blip What's on his bottle behind here. the counter? <laughs> <laughs> Blipnar, you can't go back there. They'll put you in a dentured surface. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they'll do. <laughs> So Flipnar um, finds himself all of a sudden in a magical swirl. Oh no! And he's teleported outside the bar. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Where's the little guy gone? I don't know. I'm gonna go pet the dog named Spaghetti. So Flip uh, kind of looks at you guys and goes, "Oh, uh, it's uh, oh, sorry about that. It's a security measure for anyone getting behind the bar. It's a." Uh, Dimension door trap, so he's probably just outside in the woods. <laughs> These uh, animals. He should be fine. He can just walk right back in. It's just a kind of a, you know, just flick him off a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about uh, our small gnomish friend. He doesn't understand manners. So. Oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's not a problem. Not a problem. I know gnomes well. They're basically like little cobbles. They're just very excitable. No big deal. <laughs> I see him peeking over there through the window. I wonder if he knows there's a door. <laughs> I can see his little gnomish hat at the top of the window. You mean, but I'm waiting for me stew. <laughs> Hello, Lipnar. I just like knock on the window. Like, go, go through the door. <laughs> door, door. That was fun. That was fun. Go to the door, Blipnar. Blipnar. That was fun. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. <laughs> no, no. No more portals, Blipnar. Come on. <laughs> Blipnar, come back in. You can do it again. There's two here. Oh, boy. Come, hello, hello, Blipnar, hello. come on. Blipnar. I, dra- no, I, I grab Blipnar by his tiny hand up. and drag him in. <laughs> it's, 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 oh, oh, oh. There we go. <laughs> All right. Enough shenanigans. Should we uh, find a quest or should we... Uh, we have... I think I can maybe play for another hour in meta talk here. I think I could play for maybe another hour, but that'd be stretching it. What do you guys want to do? So. Can we oh, talk to... Minutes? Oh, hold on, hold on. Here's somebody who's Look. approaching us here. Who's this? Uh, a spy. I jump up from my... I quietly jump up from I, my I, chair. I, I slap my hand over your mouth and say, don't say anything so stupid as quietly as possible. Um, sorry. Shall we find a table? You must be Boris. Yeah, uh, that's correct. Let's find a table off to the side where we can talk. Lead the way. <clears throat> well, he we just kicked a goblin out. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Lipnar, yeah. come sit. I'll stand. What's happened to Mountain Chicken? Where's the little frog? A big man. There where, where is my frog? There he is. <laughs> Are you Elbert? I am. I take it the Baron sent you. Uh, that's correct. How do we know for sure he's Eldrick? <laughs> so he he looks at you, kind of nods approvingly, and he flashes a black signet ring at you that has the falcon crest on it. Mm-hmm. But he very discreetly shows it to you and then very quickly, very quickly and very like methodically slips it off and it disappears. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to assume that we are obvious enough if he's been briefed that a, a bugbear, a gnome, a human rogue, and a giant are coming into <laughs> town. So, uh, I don't think we need any credentials. I'm not going to try and present anything. But uh. no. Did you, you see his ring? It was very big. <laughs> quiet, gnome, quiet. So as, as, as you say that, he kind of very quickly backhands you. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, Horus. You need to keep your people quiet and discreet. 
having a gnome jump into a dimension door immediately upon entering a freaking inn is not the way to be discreet. Right you are, right you are. <laughs> Boris, he, he hit me. And I'll hit you again, little one. <laughs> and you hit yeah, me. he's part of our group. Easy there. Everybody simmer down. Smacking each other is going to draw attention. Control him because our lives are at stake here. This is not friendly territory for any Falcon Crest. I reach my huge clawed hand over to Blipnar and I put my hand on his shoulder. It's all right, Blipnar. Just just relax and have a little bit of Steven's stew. I, I apologize for my outburst, Black Falcon Knight. <laughs> yeah, extra stew in there, Norm. You, uh, Norm, you can have it. Here, yeah, take it. So right right before he says Black Falcon, Albrecht puts his hand over his yeah, mouth seriously. and says if you, yes. if you speak that word again, I will stab you. <laughs> oh, I reach over and I grab, um, oh my word, I grab uh, the gnome by the, by the, the side of his, his tunic and um, bring him over to my side of the table and just shove him in my pouch. How about that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> don't worry no I'll take you out in a minute okay <laughs> now that we can talk freely alright I have three leads for you that the Baron has asked me to case and have you investigate first you, undoubtedly he told you about the scholars that were working in the li- library correct mm-hmm. they said that they found something but they never were able to report what they found. Missing records are likely still in the library because it's been sealed since their disappearance. Mm. It's lightly guarded at night. So your best bet is to try and infiltrate during the nighttime and see what's going on. The Baron scribes, they answer to me. When they want to keep something hidden, they use powerful illusion spells. He hands you a ring and says, this ring will glow when you are close to one of their enchanted enclaves. Be careful if you're trying to be stealthy, as this will create a bright light when you are close to the enclave. It can be a box, a compartment, or even a magic voice spell, so be on the lookout for when it glows. Hmm. The the second... stares intently at that ring. So the second lead I have for you is what I believe is a safe house where I spotted Majesta. It's on the western edge of the capital. The location is here, and he shows you a map. I warn you, though, this is a very powerful wizard. He probably has incredibly powerful magical traps protecting his Mm honor. However, if you have 200 gold that I can pay my little birds in the capital, I can case the place for you and probably find a good amount of the traps for you. But I'll need 200 gold to pay the spies to actually conduct the mission for you. Say, I wonder who among us has just acquired a certain sum of 200 gold. Funny how convenient that was, right? (laughs) Um, The third third lead I have for you is uh, Majesta was sighted at the Queen Regent's estate, uh, a.k.a. the Lion Manor. It would be very dangerous for you to attempt to infiltrate the royal estates, especially if you go in blind. I highly recommend that if you provide me 600 gold to pay my spies, I can case the place for you and find entry points so that you can get in and discern where the location of any potential information may be. So you have three potentials. I'd recommend you start with the library. Yes. I think the library is our best bet. We have uh, advantages at night. Um, we, uh, Tyus, uh, I don't yeah. think any of us have 200 gold except yourself with your amazing drinking abilities. It's your money. If you choose to give it to them, it'll aid our cause, but I'll leave that decision up to you. The you all burst out of your pocket. Money? I have money? <laughs> <laughs> I struggled trying to, to hold him. He's in shoving place. back in. <laughs> so as as he comes out, you see Albrecht kind of pull this bag that has like a glow around it and just kind of swoop it over the gnome and the gnome disappears. Whoa. What'd you do to the gnome? I jump back a bit with my hands slightly in the air. <laughs> you, you guys don't gotcha. know subtle, do you? I say, say quietly to my breath. 
I didn't say anything. I just jumped back a little bit, I promise. Don't don't worry, gentlemen. It's a bag of holding. If he, you know, stays relatively calm, he's got about 10 minutes of air in there. <laughs> he's It's not a bag of devouring, so he didn't get eaten. He's just in an extra planar dimension for the next 10 minutes <laughs> until I dump him out. Okay. Run it, run it by me one time again. What happens if I give you the 200? I didn't quite hear. It will be money to fund my spies and my agents to case the safe house for you so that I can identify entry points and potential traps. <clears throat> what do you say, big man? Now, it's not required. It's sure. We'll make what, it easy. What kind of traps would we expect from these people? Well, it's Majesto, so, I mean, as far as I know, you could probably teleport a dragon right in your face as you enter the door. All right, that does it for me. I'll pay for it. I got 580 gold waiting for you. Yeah, let's, have, let's, let's quietly pass 200. I'll take the bill. Okay. How do you have that much so gold? You, Wait a minute. <laughs> no, it's fine. Hey, I, 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 I look it's confused. Baron. I look confused. So, yeah. It's from his grace. He paid us, didn't he? Yeah, you did get 500 That's in true. starter money. So. so there's 200 on the table. I quietly slide over several fine coins. So Albrecht kind of sweeps the coins up, and he, he throws them kind of violently into the same bag that the gnome is in, and you can kind of hear Flipnar like, Ow! Oh! Oh! Ah, ah. <laughs> and, and he kind of uh, smiles at you. a ransom for the gnome. <laughs> He kind of smiles at you guys. He's like, sometimes I take joy in my profession. <laughs> um, I am intently. <laughs> then he, he looks at you and he says, okay, about two to three nights time, I should have a full report for you on the safe house. If you want to, if you find more funds and you want me to case the lion, uh, the lion manor, it'll take a little bit more time. So I'd recommend I've already secured rooms for you here in the tavern upstairs. Get it, get it, sleep it off for the rest of the day. About midnight, I would say, is your hit time to go after the Lion Brick Library. Very good. Fascinating. Okay. Thank you. Any, right. que any, any questions? When will you be here you next? No, 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 no. no. When, when can we meet you next? Uh, will you be here every night? Will you be here every other night? What's the plan? Yes, my cover is a regular drunk in the bar, so I will be here every night. Good. If you are not here, that is fine. But I will be here every night as part of my cover plan. Sounds good. All right. Uh, we'll just take our gnome back and we'll find our rooms. So. Uh, wait, one last thing. You guys came into the city as merchants, correct? Yes. Yeah. Give me your merchant visas. Okay. Why? Because I'm going to destroy them and give you adventurer visas. Ah, that'll work just fine. Mm -hmm. And Fantastic. we all hand them over here. Yes, hand him over. And he hands you your freelance uh, adventurer kind of visas so that you can come and go as you please under the guise of doing quests. Mm hmm. Very good. Oh. And with that, he gets up. He kind of brushes himself off. He takes his bag and he turns it kind of vertical and he smacks it really hard. <laughs> and flying out of the bag, holding <laughs> his backside, is Flipnar. Yeah! And he tumbles off onto the table. <laughs> And before before you even know what happens, Albrecht has disappeared. That. Mean man, mean man, I say. <laughs> Someone must have dropped him as a child. <clears throat> Let's go find our rooms. Sir. Hey, I'm getting tired. That soup is putting me to sleep. May I talk to this dwarf here across the table? Yeah, it's your time. Have at it, Tyus. Talk to the dwarf. Okay. Um, he kind of just looks at you. Sorry, what's his name? Arvard. Okay. Well, I don't know that yet. So I, I speak to him, and I assume he does. So can I talk to him in dwarvish? Yeah, you can. All right. I say, hair in my mouth. <laughs> you say hair, hair in your mouth. 
air in my mouth. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> it sounds like he's insulting the dwarf. I wonder what his plan is. <laughs> no, that's it. No, it's in real life. There's it is very nice. <laughs> so as you as you approach um, the dwarf, you you see that there are several empty glasses on his table and a pile of scrunched up balls of paper. He appears extremely agitated and fidgety, um, and he's clearly having trouble concentrating. I ask, what troubles you, um, dwarf? <laughs> I don't know what else to call him. Mr. Dwarf. My, my, short yeah, king. Call him short king. <laughs> I have not seen a Goliath in a long time. My name is Arvad, and I'm working on my next big epic. I'm a poet, you see. Oh. And I'd wish to be left alone as I work my art. <laughs> Good luck. Um, what is your name? <laughs> I, I just told you I'm Arvad the poet. I, I can I can turn you up on disc. I can barely hear you sometimes. Oh. <laughs> Svensson and uh, Boris just start strolling back to the fire. <laughs> oh, maybe I should fetch the gnome first. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I will interrupt, but I'm going to take Garrett's hand. I'm going to take him over to the fire as well here. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna, a flame. I'm going to get too close now. I stopped caring when she said poet. <laughs> real actually, though, actually, I'm going to walk over if this is okay. I'm going to examine this weird red axe sitting on the, the fireplace mantle. I'm going to, can I examine that? You, you can try. I shall attempt to. Uh, is it, uh, what, what, what bar would that be? Uh, you can roll investigation. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let me see here. Brother Svensson, uh, roll investigation. Uh, where is it? Really? Uh, investigation, here we go. I'm going to roll that. Normal roll. Ooh. Hmm. Ah, there we go. That, that Finally, my investigation skills are coming back. This, the super is chopping my senses. <laughs> so this red axe tends the fire because it's magical. It's a spell cast, and you notice that as you're looking around that all the glasses in the bar seem to be enchanted so that when a person... Uh, puts out gold, their glasses automatically refill. What, is, what witchcraft is this? This what guy is wonderful. <laughs> mm. You can start quite a quite a, um, a racket this way. <laughs> Place as <laughs> many coins down and keep reselling the beer. <laughs> Are we headed to a library? That's a good point. Should we rest for the night, come companions? Well, we got in kind of late in the afternoon, right? So we should rest the night, so... Wait, yeah. how long did he say it would take his spies before they would scope out the whole library? Uh, they, they're scoping out the safe house, of course, Tyus. So uh, give him, a, I think he said about three days. So we have time to go investigate the library tomorrow and probably time to do a few side quests from within the tavern before we begin our uh, mm. attempt if on the wizard's safe house. If I remember correctly, the wizard safe house is going to be quite a bit more secure than the library. Am I mistaken? Is there anybody who needs an item fetched or possibly a person disposed of? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? what a, does that have any any bearing at all with what we're talking about? <laughs> Come on. I think, I think he's talking about, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think he's talking about side quests. Ooh. Glipnor, try to take the axe from the fire. I want to see what happens. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, don't touch it. Don't touch it. The, the, the fire is a nice thing. Besides, you're, you're we don't know how that how that axe works. Your <laughs> party engulf this whole room in flames. Your party just wants to die. <laughs> Not me. Anyway, um, I, have, I have a mission to accomplish. I can't die before it's done. Party, right. meta so what would you guys? What do you guys want to do? I think uh, I don't think we have time for a full mission here, so maybe we could. Yeah, I got to call it a night. I think. Yeah, yeah. I got to work tomorrow. Um, but uh, is there anything we can do in the next twenty minutes that would? Uh, can we get to the uh, the library? Maybe because uh, it is nightfall, right? It's coming up, so we can start getting over can, there. Yeah, you can. You can certainly start the library. Um, 
You don't have to finish it. You can just start it. Okay. Well, uh, let's. Uh, you guys want to do that, or you guys want to just pause here and then start the library fresh next? I gotta time? get up a little early, actually, but tomorrow. Is it all right if we uh, call it quits? Call it all right. Is that okay? It's completely up to you. How are you guys feeling, uh, Harrison Garrett? I'm fine. But uh, yeah, up to you guys. I can play for more, or if you guys want to leave it here, we can start fresh. You know, next time. Yeah, we've been playing for at least three hours now, so it's probably a good session here. So uh, We'll start fresh next time, and then we can have the full quest of getting there and then, you know, exploring and all that. Let's do all that. Right. Oh, cool. Whoa, so yeah. Yeah, right. so... we got to have a full session to go through this. Oh, yeah. You guys... Big... Yeah, that's the library. Um, and I think you guys can probably see the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I will re- I will reset it, um, but that's fine. You get a little bit of a a taste, a sneak peek, a little taste. And now you should see nothing. Yep, nothing there. No, I don't see it. Yeah, fantastic. Well, guys, that was really fun. Um, I do want to say though, we we could probably lean even more into the role playing side of things. Like for the battle, um, we didn't. There wasn't a lot of like conversation, but no, I I think we did great. I mean, we're getting the grips of it. <laughs> Okay, because I felt bad. I'm like, is there enough role? Am I doing enough role playing? Steven, here? But, you were uh, the best role player here, I think, with your voice and uh, talking and stuff. So you did great. So. Yeah, it's good to hear. Very, very lovely. <laughs> I feel like uh, I, I just used my regular old voice the whole time because I, I, I mm-hmm. somehow couldn't conjure up an accent. Hilarious. Garrett, is, think, Garrett is hilarious, man. I feel That's like Mark hilarious. has to be like the grounded point, like part of this. I'm the one straight man. Everything, everyone else is yeah. just trying to kill you themselves. <laughs> Yeah, Garrett, uh, yeah, you're just a murder hobo. You're like a death gnome. Just exactly. I love everything about Tyus it. Tyus and Blipnar are out of control. And Brother, uh, Brother Svensson's pretty solid. But then, uh, yeah, then uh, Boris is pretty My level-headed, too. Caution, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, when, when a gnome throw attack happens, <laughs> it, it will be hype. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm ready. The first throw attack didn't work so well, but that's okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought this could really work, right? But if, he, no, if he had thrown me on that first one, he just would have thrown me in the wall, and I would have turned into a red like mush. <laughs> well, he would he would have had advantage throwing you because you're a small creature. Okay. But he, okay. He, his first yeet attempt was at something that's almost as much weight as he is, which is a bugbear, because a bugbear is a, essentially a mountain of meat. So yeah, I'm big too. It didn't quite work. Yeah. Yeah, it was hilarious though because you got to meet. <laughs> You got to meet a castle wall. Um, <laughs> but um, so as we as we wrap up for the night, you guys have the main quest now. You have the main storyline. Mm-hmm. You kind of have your first real mission. Um, you got an introduction to kind of like what would be in terms of meta, your quest hub, which is the inn. And from there, you will have the option to, you know, talk to people, get some quests from them. Almost every single character in that inn has a quest for you. So, cool. um, so you can do whatever you want to do. The, the timeline of how you progress is on you. Um, and what you do and how you approach this story is all on you. Um, I'm just here to narrate and kind of brace for impact for which way you drive this train. <laughs> um, so as you can see here, you're, you're at the brick line library, which is where we'll pick up next time. And your mission is to find what the scholars left behind, which will drive you to the next portion of the main quest line. Interesting. I see. So at this point, it may be beneficial to have someone kind of like your designated note taker, because you're going to get a lot of information pretty quickly. And I'm not going to spoon feed you on the story. I'm going to spoon feed you on mechanics. But the story is going to be yours to complete. So if you come to the wrong conclusion and wind up executing the Baron, by all <laughs> means, it we'll happened. call that we'll call that a less than optimal ending. But it'll be an ending that you chose. Let's try to get mm-hmm. a good one, lads. Well, just kill everybody, then everybody wins. That's also no, an no, option. Nobody pays us, and nobody pays us. <laughs> I mean, uh, Hemo can't solve everything. <laughs> it, it's it's amazing how much money you can take off of a corpse without resistance. So, um, <laughs> but again, it's, it's up to you. Uh, so from here, the only thing I would recommend is just have someone who's taking notes so you can piece together 
the kind of interwoven conspiracy story I've kind of crafted for you to keep it interesting since you guys all said. Mark, I would say you, out of all of us, you're the best note taker. I got uh, I got the, the, the basics Somebody of the quest right now. Sorry. For three seconds ago. Yeah, um, I've already got uh, the basics of the quests we're facing right now. Um, you know, So we've got the uh, uh, Lion Brick Library, several scholars get dead, found information and records. Glowing Ring reveals magic items. I didn't get that part wholly as understood as I wish I could have. Um, but the safe house is the next quest, has wizard traps. It's where Magisto could have been staying. Um, the Lion Manor is the much more hard task, and that's like 600 gold, I believe. I should write that down. Um, mm-hmm. We've already paid for the safe house. Need to pay for the lion one. So anyway, I've got some some basics of what we should be doing, and then we can uh, move forward from there. So yeah, and we could okay. also talk to Albrecht whenever he shows up and get more information or reminders if uh, we want. Yes, to I think I think we should start next time. Uh, we should find what we can in the library, and then possibly ask around the end and see if there's anything we can do there or any information we oh, yeah. can gather. There should be some, hopefully, not too crazy quests we can go after. Um, it's kind of the academy from Prodigy, <laughs> and just to, yeah, sweet. just to give you kind of a spoiler that this is the Lion Manor. Nice, right? Uh, it's a huge building, so highly recommend you do that one last because oh yeah, oh yeah, it's predicated on you guys kind of advancing a little bit. Um, we're not going to succeed but, unless we've got some uh, additions to what we already have. So yeah. Well, again, you may. Uh, I would say the <laughs> odds are not in your favor, but you may. You may. You may roll natural twenties, but um, but yeah. So just to explain what the how the magical ring works, right? So the scholars are all illusionists, so they hide their secrets with illusion magic. The ring that Albrecht gave you reacts to illusion magic. So. Think of it as like the sword that they gave the Hobbit in Lord of the Rings. Like when orcs are nearby, it glows blue. Same concept. Okay. No, I have um, the divine sense allows me to like sense magic. Yes, I can help. Yeah, so it actually, so divine sense helps you find like divine magic and evil magic. So illusion is not really like wouldn't really be picked up by divine sense gotcha. um, because your your divine sense is really looking for celestial and infernal type magics gotcha question for you and this might be uh something for next time but it looks like it's dark outside is it dark inside the library too no the library inside will be lit okay it'd be well, fun if it was you isn't it yeah Mm-hmm. And so what you'll see is, so you see like how I just placed the torch and it kind of became a little bit lighter outside. Mm-hmm. There are torches inside. And so when you get into a room, it'll be lit up. I'd love to be able to put out the lights because both Garrett and myself can see in the dark. So You mm-hmm. absolutely can. So if you want to put out lights, you just tell me and it goes dark. That would However, be fun. But yeah, two of just, our party can't just, see. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, just I remember a lantern tool I can maybe equip. Mm-hmm. I thought in my backpack. Yeah, but also remember guards, right? If you put out torches, they might notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What if I so, smack them into a fine paste? <laughs> you can, you can do that. That's always the backup. Yeah, that's we got That's the last resort there. Uh good. Oh, um, um, oh. Harrison. Yeah. Yeah, so again, if you guys if you guys want to go murder hobo, by all means, go for it, right? <laughs> we but also might want to be discreet, you never know. So. Yeah, but if but this this first mission is built for you guys to kind of have like a tutorial and introduction to like stealth mechanics. Okay. Uh, so no. I think I think we go, you know, as stealth as we can and if it comes to it, we have Harrison pick me up and then throw <laughs> me clean through a, a guard. <laughs> and just blow like a Looney Tunes hole in his chest. <laughs> you get Tom and Jerry move. Your armor class is high, so hopefully, I don't know if that would help you with the bludgeon damage, but yeah. So. Hold on a second. I have to look at projectile weapons here for a second. <laughs> oh, but still can we do that? The you can do torpedo, it. The gnome torpedo. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, weight, the damage will be based on your weight class. And you will take damage in return. So, like, if you hit an armored target, 
You're oh, of take, course. You're, you're going to take bludgeoning your, damage. Your whole spine compressed. <laughs> And and you will take the same amount of damage that you inflict. So oh, okay, that won't be very worth it then, because you only have nine hit points. So and Adam, <laughs> yeah. So in context, you you could kill the gnome, but he would he would only severely injure a guard. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure something out. I'm sure we'll figure something out. One thing, a yeeting will must take place at least on a successful just, yeeting. I'm just imagining right. Harrison picking up the gnome and then throwing it at a guard as hard as he can, <laughs> and then on the guard's breastplate, it just my little gnome just turns to just this fine red paste. <laughs> nothing happens. Splat. It, like it's just your face dented in the front of the metal. <laughs> like, exactly. And then Garrett creates a new character. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wait. All right. You- making new gnomes we have just un- unlimited gnomes no that's right. not how that works no okay <laughs> all right oh no it's my identical twin brother flipnar <laughs> <laughs> all right he lived in the purple mushroom next to his <laughs> all right teammates well it was fun for me um any Thank feedback you, you guys have um just let me know shoot me a note anything you'd like to see that i could do better uh, i'm always aspiring to improve as a dm um but I hope you guys had fun and uh, just get Definitely. in the group chat. Just let me know when you guys would like to engage again. Yep. We'll yeah, schedule it up. Was awesome. I, I thoroughly you enjoyed guys, it. You guys did great, by the way. It was super fun. Thank you. It was very fun. Thanks, guys. All right. We'll reconvene in a, a couple of weeks once we get back from Nashville.